everybody. I hope everyone is staying warm, as Joyce said. We're so excited to have so many of you here with us to learn how to use your um, different Cricut machines and really get started. Um, feel free, if you have any questions along the way, put them in the chat um, box and Joy will be on the back end trying to answer those questions, give you information that um, will help if it's a longer question. She has links to different resources for you that are, are helpful. So um, feel free to hit her up with any questions. She will also be going through the questions. And if she sees a question come up numerous times, she'll stop me and say, hey, you got a couple questions on this. Can you go back over this? We are here to help you and really make using your Cricut machine super fun and super easy. So um, that's what we're gonna do. We, the format of the class, we will first start off with a PowerPoint presentation. We found that that is the easiest way to spotlight and highlight where you have questions or where I'm going through on Design Space then versus trying to follow along with my, cricket, my uh, mouse. And then we're gonna transition over and we're going to make this project here. It's just a tumbler from Michaels and we're gonna add some vinyl to it. So you'll actually see the whole process all the way through as we go along. Um, if you're having any troubles with hearing, make sure you have your speaker, your computer volume up and let's dive in. I will start sharing my screen and we will do the, oops, I bet you can see my whole screen, can't you? Yes. <laughs> it doesn't. And for anybody who's curious, if you um, want to place your view on speaker, that will help you see a little bit closer into the PowerPoint instead of seeing it from a further away distance. I'm so sorry. I'm having a little technical difficulties here. That's okay. We'll just run through a couple things with Zoom then while Kesley's doing that. Um, down at the bottom left corner, you guys have a microphone on your Zoom. Some people say they don't, they can't hear or don't have audio. Go down to that, um, to that microphone and make sure you have the volume turned up on your computer. And also make sure you have the volume on your computer up if you don't have any audio. And today we're going to cover um, how to download Design Space and how to um, get your machine to start cutting. So, right. Kelsey, are you? I am ready to start the slideshow. It's just not letting me pick which program to share. Okay, so if you want, why don't you put that into slideshow? Oh. Right, it's just letting, I can put it in the slideshow and then. And then it should take up your whole screen, right? Yeah, there we go, is that good? All, All right. right. Hi everybody. All right, here we go. Here we go, getting started. All right, so we're just gonna walk through a couple of the different machines that are available through Cricut um, and Michaels. The first one is the Cricut Explore Air. Um, this is, you know what? Ooh. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Cricut Explore Air is your do-all type of machine. It's a great machine. Anybody can learn how to use it. You have two different um, blade op two different blade options to use. So you can have a writing tool and a cutting tool with it. You have over a hundred materials that you can use with it, and um, four different blades types like the pen, a scoring, and a cutting tool. It also allows you to um, you connect with Bluetooth or directly with a cord. So that's our Cricut Explore Air 2. And then you have the Cricut Maker. The Cricut Maker does everything that the Cricut Explore Air does and more. So it allows you to work with over 300 types of materials. You can, um, it has more power, the powerhouse. So you can do a little bit more industrial items with it. So um, different blades, you have 12 different options for blade types of cutting. You can score with it. You can cut fabric with it. Um, it does have more pressure. So you can do thicker materials like balsa, the type of balsa wood. You um, have different blade options. There's an embossing blade and a debossing blade that you can use with it. And so th this is your powerhouse of a, a cutter. And then we have the Cricut Joy. 
And in our house, we call this the kitchen cricket because it is so small and compact that it will fit right on your kitchen counter and not take up an a noticeable amount of space. The Cricut Joy has one um, tool holder, so you can put a cutting tool into it or a writing tool into it. It also is um, six and a half inches wide, where the other two do 12 inches wide. One really unique feature with the Cricut Joy is it only connects with Bluetooth and it connects with, um, I mean, not connects with, but it has a special material that you can use with it called smart vinyl. And this allows you to cut without having a mat. You can just put it right into the Cricut Joy and your designs will come out and it cuts right on the vinyl. You can use a mat. So you have up to 50 different options of um, mat material, of, of different material types that you can cut or write on. And the other thing about the Cricut Joy is um, it does have some special vinyls like a writable vinyl, which is really fun. There's a white vinyl that you can write on. And that's a really quick rundown of all the different um, Cricut machines that are available for you. Um, it just depends on what you're trying to do as to which machine to select. So if you're a card maker, the Cricut Joy is an excellent option because you have the special card mat that you use just to cut out cards. If you're a, a DIY crafter, you want to use paper, you want to use vinyl, the Explore Air is a great option. If you're a little bit more, want to get more um, options, then you can up, up to the um, Cricut Maker. So those are the three different Cricut machines and a little brief overview. All of the Cricut machines, however, work with design space. So design space is really what you're here to learn about today. And what design, I think of design space as the brain for my, between me and my Cricut machine. So design space will allow you to get your creative ideas out and onto, um, onto an item, a product, all right? And at any point in your journey with Cricut, if you want to dive in more and learn more, learn.cricut.com is an excellent place to start. This is, they have lots of videos, manuals. Um, they have like projects, step-by-step -step projects you can do with it. Um, I can't remember, Joy, do you know what that section is called offhand? Oh, which section? Sorry. Where they have like where it'll show you how to, it, you, they have videos on the learn.cricket.com that shows you. Well, Cricket how has. How do you take transfer vinyl and different materials? I'm not sure. I'm I sorry. Just, I, I was thinking thinking of all the questions. That's okay. That's okay. I shouldn't throw questions at you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's dive into what, uh, into what design space is and how it works. So the, um, the first part of design space is understanding and getting comfortable with the different, different locations of things, I guess is the best way to say it. So the homepage design, this is the homepage design here. So when you open up Cricut Design Space, this is what shows up for you. And there's four different parts to the Cricut Design Space home. And you know you're at the home space because it says home right up here in the corner. So right here we have our header. And the header is the first section. It allows you to move between Cricut, uh, like the home section and your canvas. So right now we know we're at home. If you were on your canvas, this line would say canvas. You know you're logged in because it would say your name. You can locate and find your project. You can explore which machine you have and what you can do with that machine, or you can start a new project right here. So this part of your homepage is called the header. Then you come down, oops, sorry. On the header has those three bars on it. Let me go back here. These three bars here, also help you navigate around design space. And the three bars when you 
click on them, these all these options pull up. As a beginner, you can start your profile um, with your Cricut ID, add your picture, tell a little about yourself. The home icon right here will take you back to this page. Canvas will take you back to your Canvas. And then new, new machine setup. That's the other area as a beginner. This is where you go to set up your machine, new machine setup. As you move down your home page, you have the banner. And that's the second set of images down below the header. The banner is where you'll see different ideas come across. You'll see different products come across. Anything new that Cricut has, that's where they will highlight it and spotlight it. And also seasonal ideas will pop up here. So if you've already dived into design space, you may have noticed over the last couple of days, there were lots of cute Valentine's Day projects right in here. Then moving down, you go to your projects. And anytime you make a project on your design space, you can save it so you can refer back to it later on. So if you've made something and your friend's like, oh my goodness, that's so cute. I want you to make me that same thing. Boom, you've saved it. It's right there. You know where it is. And then the next space down, this is the My Project space. And there might be different, um, band, different images here each time, but all these items below this are designs and projects that are ready for you to make. And you just click on one and it, you can send it right to your printer, <laughs> not your printer, right to your Cricut machine, or you can send it and customize it. So this is where you find all of the items that are projects ready to go. And you can click on the view all so that you can see more. All right, are there any questions about our homepage that I need to answer, Joy, before we move on? I think you covered everything. Excellent. I think you got it all. I think I'm getting the other questions. Okay. Everything. <laughs> okay. So once you, uh, once you've kind of explored your home space on your design space, then you're ready to start making projects. Actually, Kesley, there is one thing that I will say. Your design space, Canvas, or your homepage might look different from what Kesley was showing. If you're on an iPad or if you're looking at it on an I on a phone or a tablet, the layout is a little bit different, but all the same features are there. Great. Yeah. So your design space canvas, once if you're wait, so when you're here, you can click the three lines to get to a new project. You can go to your projects and click new project here. And you can go all the way over to the green button to click click to start a new project. All three ways take you to the same screen, and this is your canvas. So what you're starting off with your canvas is a blank space to design and build. And it's similar to your home space is that you have sections for it. So again, at the top, we have our header. And now we know we're on canvas because it tells us you're on your canvas. You have those three lines that you can navigate back to your design home space, home homepage right there. Um, you have my project. So if you want to go to look at the library of projects you've saved, you just click on my projects. When you're ready to save a project, this is where you save it. And if you want to explore by machine type, you just click explore. And then the last box here, which is not bright yet, is the make it. And so once you're ready to make your project, you click the make it button. Underneath the make it button are your layers. And this, we really dive deep into this into the two at the, in the 201 class, but the layers is where you will see your project pages start to show up. So as you design something, you're layering on shapes and text and images, and all those different shapes and text and images show up here as layers. And then there's actions at the bottom that you can do to each layer. In your left-hand corner here, and it's very light to see, this is why the PowerPoint's good, it has 
and then a, a negative sign on one side and a positive sign on the other. If you're working on an image and you wanna zoom in on that image, this is where you do that. This is where you can zoom in. And it's very subtle. So when I open it again, I'll go back and show that to you so you can see it. And then the last part over here, this is your design panel. So if you're ready, if you kind of messed around a little bit and you just wanna give yourself a clean canvas, you can click on the new button and that will give you a new canvas, blank space. You have, um, oops, yeah, okay. You have templates. I'm so sorry. You have templates here. Let me just check. Okay, sorry, sorry guys. You have uh, your templates here and templates are pictures that don't cut or anything like that, but it shows the item that you're working on. So for example, if you were to make a t-shirt, you could find a t-shirt template right here um, and put it on your canvas and then put your design on the t-shirt to see how it would fit and how it would look or a mug or you know, a, a planter, any kind of thing that you put vinyl on or heat transfer on would find under templates. As a beginner, I don't really use this. Even as an advanced uh, Cricut user, I don't necessarily use the templates too, too much, but they do come in handy. Projects will take you back to the home page to the Make It Projects. So when you click there, you can go to all different kinds of projects that you can make. Images will take you to the image library with all the different images that are available for you to use. This is where you would select text if you wanted to add text to your design, shapes if you wanted to add shapes to your design, and upload if you wanted to upload images. So all this happens under your design panel. And then once you've added an, an image or started with a shape, your edit features along the top here, which are not highlighted until you have a shape or an image on your canvas, those will highlight and then you can work with those. So this is the basics of where your canvas is and where you find things. Um, you start over here with what you're, what you're going to make. You come up across the top to work with that actual image and layer. And then you go over here to see all of your different layers. And as we walk through, you'll see these in action. But this is what those icon, those spaces are for on design space. So the images, this is the image icon takes you to an uh, image library with thousands and th tens of thousands of different images that are available. And how do you get through all those images? Well, when you click on it, it takes you to the search feature and you can search all of the different images. They do break it down. So if you know you're looking for something for a baby, you can just go to occasions and pop up the baby images that would show up. You also have on the left side with the red, my red box around it, the highlighted categories. These are featured items, featured images, images that have been recently added, free this week, and image set. And there are new free images all of the time. So that's always a good place to go start with. Um, to get access to all of the images, you have your Cricut ID and you can, with um, Cricut access, you have access to all, a lot of the images or you can do sort of a pay as you go version. So you buy an image as you work on it. So if we're gonna search for something, Today, we're gonna to search for a love you heart. And you just type in whatever, whatever you're looking for. If you're looking for sports, you can type that in. If you're looking for a men's beard, you can even type that in. But today I selected love you heart as our search item. So when I hit enter, it takes me into all of the images that go with love you heart. And there are 17,411 images that go with Love You Heart, which is an amazing amount of images that you can work with. 
And if you keep going down on your left side, you have the filters options. So this is really good because it allows you to start filtering down your images and reducing the number of images you're looking at. So the first one is uh, that I use is the operation type. Am I just looking for something I wanna cut out? Am I looking for something I wanna draw? Do I wanna print it and then cut it? Or do I wanna do a cut and draw? So all of those, you just click on one of the functions, the operation types you're looking for, and it will reduce the number of images that are available for you. You can further reduce your images by your image complexity. And this is a simple image, a moderate image, or complex image. So, you know, if you're just looking for something really simple, a simple image, you just click that box. If you want something really complex that maybe has multiple layers in it, that has lots of leading in it, then you might choose the complex image. You can continue to narrow down your choices by how many layers an image has. Do you, is it a single layer? or does it have require like four or five layers? Um, so you can choose it that way as well, start to reduce it down. If you know you're just doing something, you just want a little heart on a mug, you might just go for a single layer. And then the materials you're using. So you can even narrow it further based on what type of material you're going to be using. If you have vinyl or cardstock, are you doing a t-shirt you need to iron on? you can reduce it down from there on what's available for you. So when you reduce it down, if you're doing iron-on, you may not have the print and cut feature show up. Icons that are print images that are print and cut might not show up. So that's how you use your filters to reduce down your images. Once you've settled on an image that you want or kind of is in the right direction of what you want, each image has an I button on it. The I button tells me there's more information about that image. So when I click on the I button, it tells me that I have, it, it shows what the name of the image is, the number of the image, and that there's more images that go in this set. So image sets can be a little confusing, but the way I think of them, is there is a great genie who goes, these images go together. For one reason or another, all of these types of images go together and they put them in a folder. And what you're doing when you click on view image sets, you're basically opening up that folder for what is in that image set. So for example, that particular love your heart is in an image set called stay golden. So anything that might be related to State Golden shows up here. So if you know you're looking for Valentine's or romance or wedding, then State Golden may not be the set that you're looking for. So you can go back and search again for, for Valentine's or romance. But it is really a great way to sort of narrow down your options and show images that would coordinate together. So if you were trying to do a bachelorette party, you may find images in a set that have something for the bride, something for the bachelorette, something for going out and partying. All those types of things would be within that image set. So those, so image sets, like at, just keep playing with it and you'll get more and more comfortable with it and kind of get the how, why why certain things are grouped together the way that they are. Also for old time Cricut users, like for people who've used Cricuts forever since the dawn, um, there used to be image cartridges that had, you bought an image cartridge and it had a whole bunch of images on that one cartridge. So the baby cartridge had all the baby images on it. So that is your image sets. I'm gonna go back and pull up my image again. And this, you see how now this image has a green outline on it and the other images don't? That means I've selected that image as the image I want to work with. It also tells me, sorry, let me just go back up there. It also tells me that it's part of Cricut Access and it's a free image. And this is a free image until February 22nd. So 
if you're not, if you want to go back and make the project we're doing today, you have until February 22nd to grab that image for free and make the project. Hey, Kesley. Yeah. We have a very common question in our question box. A lot of people want to know what's a good beginner bundle. And can, do you mind answering that in terms of design space or would you like me to? No, you go ahead and do that. So just for everybody, I know y'all can't see me. I'll just, this is the talking voice by Kesley. Um, it's Joy here, answer your questions. And Cricut Design Space and setups that you purchase a subscription at $9.99, or you can purchase each individual image, or you could purchase a bundle outside of Design Space and then upload the images into Design Space. So it's hard to say this is the best or that's the best or this is the one you should do or that's the one you should do. It really depends on how you're going to use Design Space. You get a free 30-day trial when you first get your machine. So I know we have a lot of new users. If you haven't signed up yet, you get 30 days of free trial, which is awesome. And then if you decide you're going to cut a lot, I would say doing the subscription is a great idea. If you're not going to cut a lot, then doing um, maybe purchasing a bundle of SVG files from, from an Etsy shop owner or something is also a great idea. And you can upload those into Design Space. So I'll put a little... Um, I'll put a link to how you can do that. Sorry, Kaz. No, that's great. Um, and also, you don't even, if you're uh, crafty, you can upload, um, when you upload images, you can do different, you can do PNGs, JPEGs, and things like that. So they don't even have to be SVGs to upload them. There's, Joy's gonna post a great video, and um, there's lots of way, different ways and things that to, to upload. But as a beginner, I think starting off with that 30 day free trial really gives you an opportunity to sort of play around and, and figure out what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Okay, so once you've selected that image, that that's the image you wanna work with, it puts it down on the bottom bar here. And it has, where my little red arrow is, it has a circle with the image inside of it. If you don't want that image, you change your mind, you can click on that image and it will remove it from the bar. But if you know that that's the image you want, you just go ahead and insert the image right next to it. And it puts it, that image onto your canvas. So now we have an image to work with. And we have, we're back into our design space canvas. And I'm just gonna run through again the terminology I used. You have your header. You have your layers, your zoom bar. You have your um, design panel and your editing tools across the top. On the particular image that we've added to the, to the canvas, I just wanna walk through real quickly what these different, what each corner means. So the first corner here, the left corner, if you click that X, it deletes the image, it removes it from your canvas, it will remove it from your layers bar over here and it, it's gone. You're done with it. The next arrow um, allows you to tilt the image. So when you, and you hold down your left button on your mouse to activate it, and then you just keep pressing it and you can rotate and tilt your image. The double arrow icon allows you to resize your image. And when you're resizing, if the icon in the left box over here is locked, that means it will resize it proportionately. When you unlock lock that icon and you use the resize tool, it will resize it not in proportion. So you can really stretch out that love you or you know, make it taller if you want, however you wanna adjust it. As long as the lock is on, it will do it proportionally. When you take the lock off, it does it unproportionately. And I can't tell you how many times I've thought it's one way or another and I've started messing with it. And you think, oh my goodness, I've just ruined this. The image, I liked it just how it was. You can either do control Z or click the back arrow and it will undo what you've done. You have 
unlimited amount of options to undo, undo, undo. So you can't mess up. That's the great thing about design space. You really cannot mess up. And if you if you really you know mangled this design, put it all different shapes, turned it, twisted it, just to the point where you're like, I can't get it back to where I started, just delete it and go back in and bring it back in um, onto your canvas and give yourself a fresh start. All right, so now I'm going to swap over to my design space and we'll actually start making it. Here we go. All right, this is my design space live. Um, I'm starting a new project. So I will go to images. I know what I'm searching for. I want the love you heart, but let's just say I'm gonna just give a little browse all images for a heart. And all these different images popped up. So I need to go through and narrow it down. So I know I wanna do a single layer. I know my material will be vinyl. And I know I'm only gonna cut that layer. So now let me see what pops up with a heart. So I've reduced down my images to 489 images. So let's see, love you heart. I'm gonna reduce it down even a little bit more. There we go. So there's a whole bunch of different heart images I can scroll through and look for the exact perfect one that I want to work with today. So I'm gonna use that one. I've highlighted it in green and you can now see it down at that bottom. Yellow is there. But again, let me show you real quick. If I had a whole bunch of hearts selected, you would see four different images along the bottom. I only want one. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the ones that I'm not planning on using off of my design space. And I know that that's small. Can you guys, I hope everyone can see that. Then I click insert images and the images that I wanna use pop up. Now I have, I pulled in two images to show you. They all show up on, they stack on top of each other, but you can just grab one with your mouse. You left click on your mouse and you drag it over. And so now I have two different images to work with if I wanted to. And those, both of those show up on the right side in my layers panel. And if I don't wanna work with the love, I can either turn it off by using the little eye and turn it on and off. So now you see it, now you don't. If I wanna use it later on, I can just save it there and it just sits there until I'm ready to use it. If I know that I don't want to use it, I can just delete that and I can delete it in my layers section or boom, right on, on the image itself. So I have the love you to work with. Now I've got my tumbler, grab my tumbler here. And I have, so I have a tumbler. I'm still gonna share, well, let me just do this. Let me stop share real quick. So, I have my tumbler here and I have my tape measure. So I'm gonna measure how big I would like my space to be. So my tumbler is almost seven inches tall, but I know I don't want it to be that whole size of it because then it would, it would cover up too much of it. So I'm gonna see how much I want the width of my heart to be. And probably just about there so you can see it when it's on the mug. So if I go with that, that's about four inches. So if I go four inches by four inches, that still seems a little bit big to me. I'm gonna probably go down to three and a half, but it's, it, there's no right or wrong answer on how big you want it to be for your project. Can I go back to my share screen? Okay, so I know I want my heart to be three and a half inches. It is locked, so my proportion will stay the same. I go to my double arrow, I left click on it, hold it, and drag it out. 
oops, that's too big, gotta drag it in. If you find yourself dragging in and out to get exactly to three and a half inches, don't spend so much time doing that. You come up to your edit bar where it says position. Oops, sorry, not position. You come up to your edit bar for your size and you can change your size right here. So I can go three and a half inches. It is locked. So my proportion will stay the same. Kesley? Yes. Can I have you real quick go back and show how you got, just how you click the image and put it onto the canvas? Sure. Sorry. It no, did, no, I'm good to ask questions popping up that, that might have gone too fast. No, good, good, good. So you select the image you want to use and it highlights it in green. So that's one way you know that that's the image you've selected. If you go down to the bottom, you'll see the, and I'm gonna put another one there because that yellow may be hard to see. If you go down on the bottom, you'll see that I have the image is right on the bottom there and that tells me it's queued up. So sort of like um, when you go bowling and your bowling ball comes through the thing and it's queued up, ready to be used. That's where those show up there. When you're ready to add them onto your canvas, you've searched, you found the ones you wanna use. You click on the insert images icon. They come into your canvas and they stack on top of each other, right there. And you can left click with your mouse, hold it and drag it over so you can see the, what images you're working with. And now you can see I have three images on my canvas. I can see them here in my layer section on the right side. And I'm going to go ahead and delete. I just deleted one. I'm going to delete the other one using the X on the image itself. So I'm just going to delete that. One. Okay. So I'm back here. I've changed the size so that my width is at three and a half inches. And I've used my edit bar along the top here to do that. Also along the edit bar, on the top here, you'll see line type, and it's a cut line. So that tells me that I'm going to be cutting this image out. There's no fill because I'm not doing any type of print and then cut, I'm just cutting it. Um, I've got the right size, but I think I'm gonna use red vinyl. So I'd like to show it on red vinyl, see what that would look like. So I can just do that there. And you see it changes it over in my layers panel here as well. So I've got my love you. I'm ready to cut it out. I've got it the right size. And then, so I'm ready to cut that out. I'm gonna pull this back out because I, okay, here we go. So back out to our PowerPoint presentation so you can see my mouse again a little better. Um, after you've made it and you're ready to send it to the machine, this window pops up. And this is your prepare window. So what this prepare window does is it tells you, here's what I'm gonna cut. Here's what it's gonna look like. Um, if you're cutting with one, it tells you how many copies of the project you're making. So if you're making a whole bunch of projects, you can repeat it multiple times. It tells you what your first cut will be, what your material size is, and if you need to mirror it or unmirror it. We're using straight vinyl, so I don't need to use the mirror. My material size will be smaller than 12 by 12, but we can let it think it's 12 by 12, that's okay. Um, and it tells, it shows me what color vinyl I'm using. I'm going to be using red. Now, if I had two images, so if I had this in red and pink, it would show up like this. I would have two cuts that would be happening. One cut would be red and one cut would be pink. So it would show you your two different cuts. Still making one project, just different color vinyl. Then once, you, once you're ready, you click on the continue button over here. So you've prepared your map. You've got your vinyl on your map. 
you're prepared to start cutting, you come over here and to the bottom right, it says continue. You click on continue and this screen shows up. So this one allows you to select which machine you're using, whichever machine you have connected to your computer or Bluetooth will show up here. Your base material will show up. And I am using the Explore Air 2, which is a little bit unique from the other machines because you can actually use a dial to set your, your uh, material, or you can use the library of materials. So I'm using my dial and I have it set on vinyl. And then it tells me the next steps are to load my tools and I'm ready to go. Oh, can't see. Yes. You must have done some magic with color. Why? Lots of people want to know, how did you change that color? <laughs> the, the, this color? Awesome. On my yeah, oh. they're very curious. Okay, so um, when one thing I want to point out, I'll show you how to, I did that in just one second, my magic. Um, when I come back to my canvas, if I don't have an image selected, my edits are all dark. They're, they're gray. When I select an image, you'll see them pop to life. And this is where I change my um, color for my vinyl. So um, instead of just having a gray image, I had, um, I turned it red. So I went up here, I'm cutting, my line type is cutting, and I'm cutting on red vinyl. You if see, I were you that's, Kesley, that's what they want to see. You press that red square, but then that dropped down all those other colors you could choose. Right. And so I could choose green if I wanted to. I could choose yellow. And the trick here is there's some follow-up questions to this. Yeah. You, um, if you're just cutting with one color, you can leave it gray. You can leave it however it is. But if you want items separated onto different mats so that you can cut several different colors, then you'd want to change the color of the image then Design Space will give you the mats and you're just pushing the mats through the machine. Right. And if you are if you wanted to, like if you wanted to make a whole rainbow of these hearts, you could just right click on the image and duplicate. And I have, let's say we want to do three or four. This one to be orange and this one to be blue because each of my kids needs their color <laughs> mug. So that's how you can change the colors on multiple ones. And then when I go to make it, I'm just gonna show you guys when you go to make it, how it will show up on multiple canvases. So I have a red canvas, a yellow and a blue um, mat. So I'm gonna, I'll show you guys another, another fun thing because you may not want to wait and, and put in three different mats. Maybe you just want to cut it out into one mat. So I would go to my yellow mat. I would click on my yellow heart and the three little buttons up here. And I would say move object. So I would want to move it to my red canvas. And then it pops up there. And it turns it red because the, the computer is saying, you have a red piece of vinyl that's going to go through and we're cutting those all out of red. In reality, you would have a four by four red vinyl, a four by four blue vinyl and a four by four yellow vinyl on the canvas. And if we have time, I can, we can do that. But that is, that is how that would work. But we're not going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to cancel this out and go back here and hide those other hearts because I'm really not ready to cut them yet. I just want to cut my red heart like that. OK. So this is my prep, my prep page. I would prep my mats at this point. And then I go over here to connect my device. I'm selecting my Air 7. I don't know why that says Air 2, my 7. Um, and I'm using my base 
my base material. Now, when we get to the overhead, I'll show you this too. I'm gonna go ahead and switch it from the, I'm gonna switch my dial to a custom setting. So if you're using a Joy or a Maker or you have your Air on a custom setting, this would show up, set your base material. So now you have to go in and be a little, do a little bit of diligence on what type of material you're cutting on. If you're cutting on vinyl, if you're cutting on heat transfer, anything like that, you would come into the browse materials, which on all fast, you select browse materials and all the compatible materials would show up that would work with my Explore Air. And they all show up there. If you click on one and say, I really use this material a lot. I, want to, I don't wanna to have to go through and find it every time. You would click that yellow star and that would make it a favorites material and then that would always show up under your favorites material here. So for this project, I'm using premium vinyl and guess what? Now I'm ready to go. And I'm going to, let me see. Yep, I'm ready to go. Okay, so do we wanna swap over to the overhead view? Kesley, this is fantastic. A lot of people are asking a question about the, um, do we have Maddie? Yeah, she's here. Um, a lot of people are asking about how you put the vinyl on your mat. So when you get ready to do that, make sure you take a little extra time. I will. I'm, I, I've got that all queued up. <laughs> for come, on, come on over. <laughs> so over here, is, we have, is, it, is the overhead showing now? Yes. Yeah. Or can you um, stop sharing your screen oh, and sorry. that'll show the overhead camera? Yes, yes, yes. There all we the trick. I know, right? Okay. So here we are with the machine and my mat. Um, so I'm gonna go over a couple things real quickly before we get to the cutting fun part of it. Um, there are two different types of vinyl. You have a removable vinyl, which is my blue here in my hand, and we have a premium vinyl, which is my red. The premium vinyl is a, I'm sorry, the permanent glossy vinyl is a permanent vinyl. So I intend when I put this down for it to stay for a long time. This is a removable vinyl and you can use it and take it off when you're ready. So you have two different types of vinyl and the, um, the different types of vinyl, you can tell you which one you're using because it will have, it will stay on it what you're using. So this is the permanent premium vinyl on here. And the colors are different. Your grid colors are different, right, Joy? Yeah, I'm answering questions. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what I do to prep my vinyl is I use my cutting mat. I mean, my my cutter, my my paper trimmer. The vinyl has squares on the back that are half an inch. Each each square is a half an inch. So if you don't have a paper trimmer, you can just use scissors and cut out the size vinyl you want. And the reason I, I trim my vinyl is it reduces the waste of my vinyl. And it's also easier for me to work with a little four by four square than a 12 by 24 inch piece. So I like to keep my vinyl semi-straight-ish. And I'm gonna cut my vinyl to a four by four Square. Okay, so I'm going to trim it down to a four by four square. Nope. There we go. Okay, and it doesn't matter which side of the vinyl you cut on. I personally like to twist it over so I can see the backside and follow my lines of what I'm using. So I need my, my vinyl that I'm gonna cut out of, and then I'm also going to need transfer tape. So there are two different types of transfer tape. You have a strong grip transfer tape and a regular transfer tape. The strong grip transfer tape is when you're using sticky, like um, bulky things. So for example, like if I'm using um, glitter and vinyl with a glitter vinyl, I use the strong grip. 
But when I'm just using regular vinyl, I use the regular grip. And it may be hard to see, but they are different colors. So this one is a gray color. This is a purple. And this also, the strong grip also says strong grip on it. So if you take it off the roll, never fear. It is, um, it will tell you right on it. This is just regular transfer tape. There's no strong grip written on it. So I'm gonna trim this one down to a four inch by four inch piece as well. So I have that ready to go. And the vinyl is, it has the, um, grid on it, not, the transfer tape has the grid, not the paper backing, which is just fantastic. Okay, so I've got my transfer tape cut, I've got my vinyl cut. I can set my trimmer aside and I'm peeled. So every mat comes with this clear plastic piece to keep your mat clean on it. So you have that. Now I'm using the standard grip mat. There are three different mats. The standard grip mat is your basic mat. It's for cardstock, it's for vinyl. It's just a basic standard grip mat. It comes with your machine. There is a light grip mat that is um, blue. And the light grip mat is used for lighter materials. So like if you're cutting out paper or vellum or something like that, you would use your lighter grip mat. There's a purple mat, which is for when you need a little bit more, um, a little bit more grip for thicker things like chipboard and stuff like that. And then you have the pink mat, which is your fabric mat. And I do have in my design space, my cheat sheet, which everyone seems to like. This is my cheat sheet I keep by my machine. So I know which mat to use at which time. And there's a, that's on my design space. So anybody can make that. I think Joy has the link. Okay, so I've got my vinyl down. Um, I like to make sure my vinyl's not gonna move. I can use a brayer or my little wedge and just wedge it down. And then I put it in my machine. My light is, is clicking, telling me it's ready to load. Now I just, I push my um, mat up against the edge very lightly, just a nice light touch. And I like to make sure it's just flat. Um, so then you click, oh, real quick. These are the dies. If I were to choose what type of material I was using, I would just turn this to vinyl in the middle and it would cut the vinyl for me. If I were using like a glitter vinyl, I might wanna do um, vinyl plus, and then that would go between like the vinyl and the iron. I'm just using vinyl, but I've used the custom setting today. So I click my, I push my, arrow button to tell me to load my mat. It loads and then it tells me it's ready to cut. So I go ahead and say cut away. So you notice that my, uh, the Explore Air has these two different shuttles. This, the B is for your cutting blade and the A is for your writing blade. Wait, Kenzie, everybody wants your cheat sheet. Oh, yeah. And I can't remember where you put you, where you sent me the link to that one. It's, it's in my, if you go to my uh, design space, I think, do you, can they, if they look, search for Kesley Anderson oh, in my design space, they can get it, but I will hold it up close so you can get a um, screenshot of it. You guys, I'm putting her name in here right now. Yeah, for good. And search her in design space. I'll do that. Okay. Too. Yeah, do that while I'm waiting. So then um, when I'm ready, I just click it out and out comes my, my um, cut mat. Now this is the trick. When you're taking anything off of your mat, these mats are like super amazing. I don't even know what material they're made of, but it's, it's amazing material. It will not it will not bend or break on you. I mean, you really have to mangle it to break it. So I turn it upside down. So my vinyl's towards my base, my table, and you just get a little corner of it and you put it down and you peel the mat from the vinyl. So you peel the mat from the vinyl. 
Now, this isn't so, so important on vinyl, but when you're working with paper, it is, sorry, when you're working with paper, it makes a big difference for you because it, um, it just, it makes it easier to peel it off and your paper won't curl and things like that. All right, so then we're going to start weeding. What weeding means, think of it like the garden, we are going to weed out our design. So we're gonna take the parts and the pieces that we don't want and set them aside for what the image we do want. I have my little lint brush here so that I can put my pieces that I'm weeding out onto my lint brush. And I'm using this tool because my other tool doesn't seem to be right here. Um, this just has a really strong point on it and it will allow me to pull up my letter, start off, start off pulling up my letter so I can just weed the U out of the design. And while we're doing that, Joy, this is a great opportunity, a quiet moment <laughs> to yeah. um, answer any questions. I, you guys have been like the most active class. I love this. We have, we have this whole extra conversation going on, Kaz, in chat. Oh, I'm missing out. No, it's okay. I love that somebody asked if they could use Photoshop. And yes, if you know how to use Photoshop or Illustrator, you can make anything, save it as, as an SVG, and then upload it into Design Space. So that was a great question. Yes, in Photoshop, you want to save it as a PNG file. Um, in Illustrator, you would be able to save it as an SVG. Oh, good thing. See, Kelsey's, Kelsey's more on the ball. <laughs> and I'm going to re-put up the 201 class um, links. The 201 class, you guys, I can see everybody's little faces, and you guys are super, super engaged, and I love seeing that. Like, I'm oh, awesome. checking on everybody. Some folks are working on things. Some people are really concentrating. It's really fun to see everybody. All right, so I am going to, there's another, uploading images is a big question, so I'm going to go ahead and put that link back into the chat so you guys can see that video. Oops. Awesome. So I've got, now I've got my love you weeded out and I'm ready to go with my transfer tape. So I'm using my um, regular transfer tape. See, I get these little pieces stuck on my fingers. <laughs> That's why my lint brush just comes in handy. Okay. So, and some people will use like nail polish holder rings that you can put on your ring and then they'll put their weeded materials into there or just a little um, diaper wipes box, they can do that. So on the transfer tape, you have the grid lines. What I do is I will line up my grid line on my grid line mat that I'm using. And this is the self-healing mat. This is what I use to craft on so that I, number one, say protect my table, but number two, I love having the grid to work with because now that my transfer tape is down, I can slide my image right up to my transfer tape. And I know I'm gonna have, my lines are gonna be centered right where I want them to be when I pick my design off of the release paper. Okay, so you can, Bray it like this, do your hand. I like to get as much any air bubbles I put in at this stage out because it helps with my, um, it helps with putting the design on the, on the bottom, on the tumbler. Now, I call these my sock rags, but this is my cheater way of keeping my tumbler in place when I'm putting my design on it. It's just, Paper towel, I mean, uh, just face cloth. I just put those on there. Okay, doke. So I've got my tumbler set in the middle. I've got my vinyl ready to be put down. And the great thing is I don't really have to worry about centering it on anything because it's not gonna go off. You can put it wherever you want. I think I'm gonna line up my extra half inch on the top there. So I just put it like that. So it holds it in place as I go. And then I use the hinge method and I peel the backing paper 
from the vinyl. Okay, and then I put it down and I like to roll, I hold on my sides, little wings, so that I um, get a smooth application as possible. Now, while I'm using a permanent vinyl, the, um, the mugs themselves are not dishwasher. They're not intended to go in the dishwasher. So they are intended for um, hand washing. All right, so there's my love you. It looks awesome. It's right where I want it to be. And then I'm just gonna peel off my transfer tape. Now, sometimes what I like to do when I peel off transfer tape is I will use, if I'm using a flat surface, I will use my, my wedge here and I pull back on the transfer tape and the wedge. And what that does is it helps whatever um, vinyl I've got, it stays down. Now I did, I forgot to mention, I did clean my mug before starting with just, um, just a little spray so that I didn't have any debris on it. Um, but I just did it that way. And there we go. There's my love you. And then you can, if there's any little spots that you need to rub down, you can rub them down. And there you are. That's it. Oh, and we're a minute over, two couple minutes over time. Because I'm right. typing like crazy. So if I can say a couple of answers and then I think we can end pretty close to on time. So if you want, if your mug doesn't go through the dishwasher, don't put it through the dishwasher, but the premium permanent vinyl will go through the dishwasher. So if your tumbler is okay, then everything can go through the dishwasher. For anybody who didn't catch the links for the classes, for 201, there's a, we're doing every other week, 201, 101. So next week is a 201 class. It's at the same exact time and you can go to the Michaels page and sign up for that. And if you can't make that one, there's another one on March 5th. And then every other week as we go along and Kesley really builds on the skills as we get further and further along. So definitely come back and join us. I see that there are lots of questions if we offer classes on the weekends or um, later in the evenings. If there is a lot of interest in that, we will make sure that we check in with Michaels to see if that's possible. But I'd like to thank everybody for coming to class and thank Kesley for being such a great teacher. Oh, Kesley has something else. I just wanna add one thing. Um, just if you have more questions um, that we didn't answer, we didn't get to, um, if on Instagram, if you do tag us with cricket at Michael, cricket with Michaels um, that I had on my, on my cricket machine, um, show us your projects you're working on. If you have any struggles or anything like that, um, go ahead and put, use that tagline and Joy and I can see what you're doing and answer you directly there. If we have, if we can, hopefully like it doesn't blow up, but um, as long as we can, we will try and answer your questions. Because um, I'm still seeing questions coming in the chat. Yes, I know. Everybody is super engaged. And thank you all for taking time on this holiday day to join us. We loved watching all of you work along with us. And if, um, if, you, can't, if you didn't make it, uh, if you'd like to rewatch this one, it's a recording, you can rewatch it. You can also sign up for, for the next 101 class. They're all free and then the 201. So thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Kesley. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Happy President's Day.